this Pope is visiting a completely different country to his predecessor. I want to hear him loud and clear recognise what the church has done to the citizens of this country. People have a deep sense of faith, but they're just not connecting with church. To Pope John Paul, Ireland was sacred ground. When he visited in 1979, contraception, divorce, homosexual activity and abortion were all still illegal. The church held sway. They used to call it Catholic Ireland, a place of pilgrimage for the faithful, but not anymore. The land of saints and scholars has witnessed a social revolution. The church that once controlled this state now battles to find a place within it. It's a seminal moment for Pope Francis to be arriving on Irish soil. The last bastion of Catholicism became the first country in the world to legalise same-sex marriage by referendum. It then voted by a landslide to lift the ban on abortion. Yeah, we're certainly a different place and, and, and this Pope is visiting a completely different country to his predecessor. In coffee shops like this one, a generation mobilised to change the direction of travel. Campaigner Una Mullally says the church hasn't moved with the times. What I see is a Catholic church that wants to actually consolidate a more conservative base um, and pursue uh, an ideology that is very much out of step with how people are thinking. The more they pursue that, the more meaning um, the church loses for people in this country. The number of Catholics has dropped from 95% of the population in 1961 to 78% today but few attend Mass on a regular basis. The church has fallen from grace, vilified for 9,000 reported cases of child abuse by priests and for imprisoning single mothers. The philosophy here at Magdalene is a very simple one. Everyone, out of their beds! Here you may redeem yourself and working beyond human endurance, remove the stains of the sins you have committed. Immortalised in the film The Magdalene Sisters, 30,000 women were locked away. Delia Mulryan spent 30 years of her life in a Magdalene laundry. We were taken to the site by her son Peter. He was born soon after she arrived here. I feel very, very sad about it. Like, I couldn't bear to do that to an animal. This kind of tells the story of Ireland. You know, yeah. you've got religion yeah. on one yeah. side, yeah. but you had what was going on inside this laundry. That's right, indeed. Uh, wh where the the poor mothers would be slaving from seven o'clock in the morning until seven in the evening, can't lift their head from what they're at. Boring work, couldn't even talk to one another, communicate, laugh or joke. It was so sad, sad environment to be in. Peter, what was their crime? What was your mother's crime? She had a baby out of wedlock. That's simple as that. And when you think of what the church did it, itself to those little children when they got a chance, the way they treated them was horrible. And they got away with it, what they wanted to do with them. Delia was one of thousands, taken from her home during the night by her own father. The priest had told him they couldn't have a scandal in the parish. Peter had a child of his own and his mother was an old woman by the time he found her. He's still searching for his baby sister and suspects the church sold her to a family in America. I think she could be alive still with, uh, with all the denials that there were ever anybody sold off from this country to America. Now we've discovered there's thousands. The remains of hundreds of other children were found buried in a septic tank at the mother and baby home where Peter spent his first four years. He says the Pope must apologise for the church. Who do you blame for this? I blame society and the state and the religious order. The religious order ran this country the way they wanted it. 
This is Knock on the west coast of Ireland. They don't come more religious than the pilgrims here. This small town boasts the national shrine and little else but religious curiosity shops. There's no other county that I or town that I know of that is just all knock is just completely religion like you know. They built an airport here after Pope John Paul came. They're hoping their second papal visit will be good for business. Before the scandals broke, the crowds that were coming here were great. And then like all of a sudden like you clapped your hands together, it was nearly halved. And, and, and that the authority of the church, they, they, they lost that. And the younger people, I suppose, younger people are now more educated than they were years ago, like, you know, and they're making up their own minds about what their religion is and what their faith is. Even here, in the religious heartland of the West, a new generation has questions about the church's willingness to adapt to the social uprising. People look to the church sometimes and they have the completely wrong view. They think, you know, that the church doesn't care, that they're just shut down and they have their own opinions of what, we, what our beliefs are. And some of the times those opinions and the, those perceptions are wrong. Like say, for example, the most one that we get from a young person is, why does the church hate gay people? The church doesn't hate gay people, you know, and I think that's really important for the church to put that message out there, you know, we have to be all inclusive, we have to welcome every single person. The church is desperate to reconnect with thousands of cultural Catholics who only attend mass at Christmas or for christenings, weddings and funerals. When I speak to parents who only bring their kids to make their communion. Their answer is always, look, I have my own faith. I pray to God and I live a good life. Um, and I think that's where we need to be to encourage these young families and then journey with them to what I like to call the summit, the celebration of Eucharist, so that they're understanding the importance of Eucharist and, and how much that they can get from that. Some have given up on religion, but not on faith. John was the poster boy for Irish surfing. He grew up attending Mass every day during Lent, but swapped the high church for the high seas. I would have competed in Brazil, in South Africa, in France, and I would have travelled to Hawaii to surf big waves. That was what I was really into. That's living the dream, John. But in your case, the dream wasn't enough. Yeah, I was in uh, Byron Bay in Australia, you know, just living to surf and have a good time. But I just had, I didn't understand it at the time, but there was an emptiness inside and I was searching for meaning and just for love. And I bought a Bible and I started to read the Bible from there. He belongs to a small independent church now. John says he's not religious, but does have a personal faith and that those are two very different things. I think we've had the influence of the Vatican, the Roman Catholic Church for a thousand years. Prior to that, there was a monastic style Christianity within Ireland. And from Patrick, Brendan, Columkill, all these guys, we were people of the book. We were people of the scriptures. And that was all about relationship, knowing Christ, walking with him, and less about religion. And so I think there's an opportunity again for us to go back to that, to go back to what the true, the true message is. This is still a deeply spiritual place, but for many, faith is more personal now. They feel the church has not adequately addressed the painful legacy of the past. There is generational trauma in this country that is the result of a collusion between the Catholic Church and the state. Um, and while there have been reports and there's been some redress, it hasn't been tackled yet. The church, you know, the Catholic Church owe 1.3 billion to the Irish state uh, for redress um, with regards to abuse. You know, the fact that one of the mo richest organisations in the world is simply, um, you know, is, is kind of dawdling on that is reprehensible. So is there a place for faith still in the public square in Ireland in 2018? I think in any progressive country, um, there is always place for all sorts of, of faiths and all sorts of religions. Uh, what there isn't a place for is for um, a religion to dictate um, education policy uh, for religion to be embedded in the constitution you know or for those uh, beliefs to be imposed upon people which they have been for so long in Ireland. So will Pope Francis have something to say 
to those who suffered most at the hands of the church. I want to hear him loud and clear and to recognise that he understands what the church has done to the citizens of this country, which I'm speaking about. What it has done to them, to the vulnerable people. They were supposed to show respect. The Pope is here to represent God here on earth. And it's far, far, far light years away from what they're doing. What would it mean to you, Peter, for Pope Francis to say, I'm sorry for what the church has done to people like your mother and you and your sister? Yeah. What would that mean to you? It would mean an awful lot. I could close my eyes in peace, but as it stands, I cannot. It's, it's, uh, it was so, so cruel. It was hailed at the time as the dawn of a new era for the church, but Pope John Paul's visit proved to be its high water mark. When he celebrated Mass in Dublin, one and a quarter million people gathered. They can only admit half that number this time. Ireland has changed, changed utterly, but some will still come out of curiosity, others in the hope of hearing that the church has done some soul searching. This is the Phoenix Park, where the papal visit will begin and end. Every word spoken by the pontiff while he's here will be critical. Ireland has become sceptical about organised religion, but many people here still have a personal faith. Some might even be willing to forgive, but is the church ready to repent?